This is 3DMD, uh, precise body scans, and they take movement into consideration when they are doing the scanning process. I'm here with uh, Chris Lane. Hey, Chris. Hi. How are you doing? Uh, mind if I, you tell us a bit more about what you guys see here? Yeah, sure. What, we, we come from a medical background. Okay. So we, we developed this originally, actually, in the UK for um, supporting pediatric surgery. Okay. Um, so the doctors could figure out whether they got a better outcome than the other. So our challenge in 1998 when we started this was scanning children. Oh, wow. So you can't use hand scanners, you have to scan very quickly. So we've always been wedded to um, a scan time of no more than 1.5 milliseconds okay. with very accurate textures. Um, 10 years ago, we started developing what we call temporal systems, which people erroneously call 4D. Um, time is not a dimension, so they right. shouldn't be called 4D. But where we're taking sequences of data. So if you, if you point now as where the child has gone, yeah. for a medical reason, if you were assessing that child's symmetry, you'd pick the image in the middle. Right. But if you're interested in the child's behavior, then you've got a happy kid going in and a happy one going out. Right. Um, we can extend that to the whole body, so we've got all these postures here. Right. And if we go over to the left, you'll need a close-up of this one. We begin to look at um, how we can relate perception in the face to the body. This right. guy is a fitness instructor. He's never played golf in his life. We asked him to do a virtual golf swing. And you can see, you know, he starts off his face and the hands are pretty well coordinated. In the middle, his eyes are all over the place. He hasn't a clue. And at the back end, he Done. gets... <laughs> so. Each of those images can be sequenced together to look at movement, right. but they can also be looked at individually to look at extremes. Okay. So the kind of things we're doing with wearable technologies now, whether they're passive technologies like sensors you're wearing, or whether they're active technologies where they're modifying your body, right. um, you've got the ability to get size and fit. Shoe scan is another example. You walk through in either direction, in three seconds you've got 14 images of the foot articulation wow, in both directions. If you want to sell something to somebody, you use a fully weighted foot here. Right. So it selects that immediately. Right. But then if you want to harvest that data later on to say, hey, I've got this great new motorized shoe or nanotechnology shoe that's going to form your feet. Right. And by the way, I collected all this data on you three months ago. Right. Here's that shoe for you. That's, I mean, that's really interesting because I think design now is moving into a 3D kind of design world where they're coming from a very traditional 2D yep. world. And uh, a lot of this, I mean, they're aware of it when they're designing the shoe, but they don't have the data to support those right. claims when they're designing something, and now they actually could use it yep. to do that. That's, that is really yep. cool. I, I agree with you, and the challenge we've got now is shoes are a good example. If we look at most sports injuries, they're caused because the shoe wants to go in one direction, the foot goes, wants Correct. to go in the other direction. Correct. Why? Because people use this foot. Right. They don't That's really... telling us a little bit more about what's happening with that foot. Right, right, right. We understand the ankle articulation. Um, we're doing the same kind of work with hands on VR. Everybody's saying, oh, let's teach ourselves to communicate with a computer with hands. Right. Uh, well, hands are a little individual. Right. <laughs> so, so we are not parametric models. And unfortunately, yeah. the 3D thinking at the moment is we're all parametric models. You vary a couple of parameters right. and we're there. We are individuals. That guy, there is no one else like him. He does all of his exercises in a horizontal position. Right. His muscle, his muscle development is totally different from anything Under Armour, Nike, or anyone else have ever seen. Right. Right. Because because he's patented this sling. Right. So you've got a situation where you can't fit him to something else. Right. Um, he's kind of like a butterfly swimmer. That's what his muscles are like. Yeah. So what we're beginning to learn is that we're all very different. That's and if such these, a, yeah. That's such a great point. I mean, when you talk about like a, a swimmer, a specific type of swimming and getting a specific type yeah. of body. Yeah. Um, and it's not just about the look, it's actually about the movement, the feel, that's, sure. that's a pretty good But we're all doing it. Because, we are, yeah. <laughs> because once we, once we get past puberty, we settle down, then our bodies develop in all sorts of ways. Right. Um, and, and that's, if we're looking at, we're going to design things which integrate with the body. Right. You know, our, our slogan is basically within five years, your body will be your digital platform. Yeah. It's not going to be your phone. No. <laughs> You're going to be wearing your Stop. data. Yeah. All your information. No, that makes sense. And this is forget really the cloud. You, everybody will be their own cloud. Yeah. So yeah, awesome. that needs to be comfortable and it needs to empathize with you. Yeah. If you don't understand the basic human factors in all of this, forget it. Yeah. So that's what we do. That's but, awesome. But instead of this being a rig in a studio, that thing fits in a shoe store. Oh, wow. Um, the Under Armour one is right in the middle of the Lighthouse Project. Right, I heard, yeah, I read about that. It's the first thing anybody goes in. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the, the launch guy for that was the wide receiver of the 49ers. Yeah. Um, 
once he got the hang of it, the next thing he's doing is taking Kevin Plank's wife and kids through and explaining <laughs> to the advantages it will be on it. That's how visual this whole thing That's is. That's awesome. That's pretty good. Thank you. Thanks That's all right. I hope that helps.